Jehova Malak, Ola Molamod, Jehova Malak, Yami, Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makari and Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, I Basilian Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Adonai Jehova. Kurios Isus Christos. Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Meshvat Shaba The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding to perform always God's good pleasure. As Caleb has been recorded six times in the Bible that he walked with Lord God with his wholeheartedness. The professing present Christendom with nominal believers aren't walking with my Lord completely wholeheartedness. If they would have been walked with my Lord God, they would mind the things of Christ rather than minding the things of their own. They would look upon the things as the word of Lord God would say for us every time. In each and every instance of it, go and make disciples. In order to make disciples, it is what we need to follow him. And the word follow, Aka Luto being translated in Luke 9 verses 57 through 62. The same thing in Revolution chapter 14 verses 13, his works do follow him. Again, the word over there, we find Ako Luto. And Ako Luto is nothing but to become a disciple. Following my Christ demands that you need to be a disciple. The man to whom such great grace has been given, and just blood God the Father being mindful about him, who made us to be a little lower than the angels, Yet this man having only hands and legs, if these hands and legs will be chopped off, he will be like a trunk of a log. Yet in these hands and legs, he loves to work out much rebellion against the Lord. If he were given the wings like the angels, what he would have done? Instead of coming back with repentance to the grace of Lord God to learn and to carry his cross and to follow him every day 
and to be mindful about the things what Lord God the Father has intended us to be, he still loves to rob from the Lord. We read that in yesterday, Isaiah 61, 8, Gazel. He loves to rob by not becoming disciples to the church age. You are born as a disciple, tech non-believer in Christ. You have to grow up as a grammatias to be as an adult son known as Huyos. And there is no excuse or any manner of relaxation like the way how Lot's wife thought she could be escaped. In the present Christendom, there is no excuse if we, we do not fulfill the good pleasure of Lord God like Caleb. And the works what we look. Anything which is against the will of Lord God, this is not the good pleasure of the Lord. He would love to warn us with His grace. Therefore, He spanks us first with warning discipline. And then he takes us still to the point of death, intensified stage of discipline. And yet, if you don't heed his instructions, you will be given to sin unto death. It's a great sad strategy for us to look why we are not able to walk wholeheartedness to the Lord. The reason is that you have not yet been put to death in your flesh. The old sin nature. And you constantly love to live a life. A life which is not at all worthy. In Second Corinthians 5.14, we have this verse which says for us, before we could be reconciled to the Lord, in verse 13 he says, For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, the word sober meant to say, sophroneo, which is nothing but sound mind. It says, it is for your cause. And the reason he says, for the demands of the agape love of Christ, constraineth us, the word to hold together, soon echo. Because we thus judge, and the word what is judging, he says over here to say that, if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live, that is now the true Zao life, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again, the word called as Agairo. Therefore, again henceforth, no, we, no man after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, at now, henceforth, no, we, no more. That is, we don't know this flesh. Then he says, is anyone in Christ? He is a kinekatesis. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become near. Many preachers would love to quote Second Corinthians 5.17. But until and unless through this flesh whom you have known Christ, after knowing my Christ, you are alien to this flesh. You cannot be a new creation. Therefore, you are not able to walk with complete wholeheartedly to the Lord. Like the way how Caleb has these things. Besides that, we have the things to learn, the failure on the communication part of the pastor teachers who will not develop you up to become the disciples because they think rituals without reality is more needed rather than considering them to be useless. The things what we will learn today as Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date and are already passed using the powers of our priesthood through the prayer, we shall come back and continue the mind of Christ. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
would enlighten and challenge us by this message, the things which are prepared and kept for us in today's day and eternity past to gather your food of your heavenly spiritual realm. In Christ, much less be your gracious name, we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen. In this wilderness journey, the man on this pilgrimage trip, what we are learning from Jeremiah 2, 6. The reason the man is not able to understand that he is in this wilderness journey is that his eyes have been blinded by the lusts of this world. And since he has been blinded into the lustful patterns of this old sin nature, and he is not able to look that he has to hate the things that are in this world, the things that are against the flesh, against Christ in the flesh. If he doesn't hate them, the same thing what we read in Luke chapter 14, if you don't hate your own family members, if you don't hate your wife and sister, brothers and, and children, all these things which are mandating, even your father, mother, as well as your own life, you cannot be to me the disciple. The reason why he says that is, the flesh is enmity to God in Romans chapter 8. They that are in the flesh cannot please the Lord. Much of the people, why they fail not to become like Caleb or to be recorded to do the good pleasure of God the Father is that they are still abiding in the flesh. They haven't understood now this flesh is the temple of the living Lord my God. And since they still abide in the flesh and know not to do the good will of God the Father, they have completely forgotten that they have been purchased with a great price. The redemption work has been given for them by Christ Jesus graciously. Henceforth, they are no longer slaves to the world, but they are slaves to the will of God the Father through Christ Jesus, having access in one spirit in performing the unique great commission of my Lord. And much of the people have failed to recognize this. And this is the failure, not only in the realm of the churches, but it is a failure in every individual believer's life, though they have been indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is our guide, who is our mentor, who is our teacher, and who is our paraclete, says the Greek. And Romans 8, it goes to teach, he is our joint partaker, Sunani Lambonanai. Besides having that great Lord God in us, what it is that we are not able to fulfill the unique will of Lord God the Father in heaven. The reason should be either your ignorance or arrogance to learn the truth, or your way that you think your hands and legs are enough to play this drama on this earth. If Lord God the Father has given this man only hands and legs and that if this man goes to do so many things of worst, shameful, which we walk to look and learn in Ephesians 5, it is even shame to speak about those things, what they do in darkness. And many people are not able to realize it. Much of the people are not able to consider it. It is shameful to speak, he said. And yet they have only hands and legs, not like the angels to have wings and even in them the rank of the wings, six wings, cherubims and seraphims. If they would have had such wings, what they would have done? <laughs> you know, this man given little and has to prove the grace of God that he is always right and upright. And as we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 18, particularly that verse which says in verse 13, you shall be perfect with your Lord, your God. And that verse is very important for us because the word, what it has been used over there is Tami'im. And the way how they would sin, he knew very well, yet he gave them that mandate so that this verse could be applicable to us now and not to have any excuses as these people love to have several times. Therefore, we read this verse, it says that you shall be Tami aim with the Lord thy God. The word perfect is very, very important because you may say in the flesh we cannot reach to perfection. But how did the Old Testament court which has been given for us over here in Deuteronomy 18.13 stands good? 
And the word perfect over there is tamim. That is nothing but to walk to Lord God the Father with your complete entirety, with your whole heart, in accord with to the fact and truth. And if every believer would wake up to understand that he has to walk with my Christ in accord with fact and truth, we think many would be disqualified. Because today, in accord with fact and truth, not many men who are called are walking. Therefore, he uses the word, many are called, but only few are chosen. The reason why he uses that quotation is that because many have many reasons, their own brainchild imaginations as alibis to claim and to present before the Lord so that they can think they can self-defend it. The excuses or alibis, whatever you rise up, it is your own brainchild imaginations. It's your brain and what the imaginations grow up that is your own child you can defend it if it has been needed but they haven't come up like joshua what we read in joshua 10 verses 8 through 12 when he was being asked of the lord lord said i have delivered them and instantly suddenly he took this journey of all night and he appeared for the battle of the lord the word night, what we look, is this earth, wilderness, in comparison with Jeremiah 2.6. And in this wilderness, you will find four things. We read, the first one was desert. The second one was pits. The third one was drought. The fourth one was shadow of death. The man on this earth, if he doesn't take the spiritual diet every day, he would be either stuck in four of these things or he would be stuck in four of these things. Either of the one of four or he will be in four. The first one, desert. There is nothing, it is absolutely dark. And the man, though he has been given hands and legs to worship Lord God, this benignity of your holy hands to be risen to the Lord God, and the legs have been given to walk in the paths of Lord God, knees have been given to kneel down before his presence. And this entire body has been given to prostrate before the presence of the Lord God, to worship him in spirit and in biblical truth, as the Greek word goes to teach proskune, to fall down in his presence and bow down and kiss. Yet this man is not using entirely the legs to walk in the will of God, but he's using his legs to walk his own lust. He is using his hands not to hold the word of Lord God so that his hands should become the pen of a scribe or the word to say to write the word of Lord God and in return his tongue should become the pen of the scribe. But what does this man do? He uses his hands to fondle along with other women. And the brain has been given for him to collect information pertaining to the word of Lord God. You know how is this man? To teach you in simple words, why does he reside in the stages of desert or pits or drought or in the regions of the shadow of death? Why does he reside there? Why does he look there? Because he doesn't allow the mind of Christ to be fed in his thoughts. But the word of Lord God says, cleanse everything. It includes each and every thought which has to be cleansed. And much of your thinking is not according to the word of God. Therefore, you cannot cleanse. It is not just we take the cleansing of our physical flesh when we take bath or we wash our clothes. You know, the word. Even when David is describing about the way how they wash my sins, the earlier time in the Tysagogical background of that subject, they used to put that clothes on a rock and they used to take a big wooden stick and beat it so that the dust could go. In the same manner, every believer has to be beaten up with the word of Lord God so that he could put to death the old sin nature. 
This is how the cleansing work should happen. But the cleansing over here, now it is purely done in the standards of outward appearance, outward beauty, outward clothes. But your thinking is still the same. To illustrate this for you, the food what you eat, it makes your body to have an effect. Every time you take in the food, it's a new chemical reactions in your body. If the food what you eat, according to the prescription of the Bible, as per the standards of the things what they have been given for us, how much you have to eat, what is cleansed and uncleansed, while coming to the New Testament, he says, Don't worry about anything. Give thanks to God the Father and go ahead because we have now the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But now you have to be alert when you are having some sicknesses in you. You take the restricted diet. Every time you take in a meal or every time you sip in some water to your belly, you have to be very careful, isn't it? The same thing what we learn over here also, dear brethren that we need to wake up to understand. Every thought what you sip in, every thought what you take in, if it isn't in the Bible, through proper exegeomai standards, you are really not using your flesh to the greater benefit of God. And in order to walk perfect with Him, in accord with the fact and truth, that's the word tamiim, to walk before Him, what does the word of Lord God demand and what is the fact of the word of Lord God? And when we have those testimonies which we need to love and when we have this law wherein we need to tread upon or to make our life to be habitual, systematical manner to go on it, then your wages will be rewarded as per the word and you do not worry or fear. And God the Father keeps you fit and alive on this earth. It keeps you for the purpose of making every word to exegete, not even let go even Iota upon Carrera as well. He wants to reveal once again. He wants to make his word of Lord God to be shined once again. And the power in that word, every facet of your cell in your body, what you have, it has to be the word of Lord God. Every thought what you take, it has to be the word of Lord God. Until and unless you do these things, you will be failing in Philippians 2.21. He said, They mind their own things, but not the things of Christ. If you look upon the things of Christ, you would be mindful what is the Bible for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20-21, 20 isagogically categorically, exegetically, and in the standards of dispensations alone. Apostle Paul himself was a dispensationalist because to talk about the things what this man has made, occultisms on this earth, he made to become for him the standards of these denominations, but it has to be only one standard in the Bible pulpit. The biblical pulpits will have only exegesis, exegeomai. And if you are not going for exegiomai, you will never learn the importance of the word akaluto and you will never become disciple. And Lord God called in Luke 9 for that man, follow me. The word meant to say, become my disciple. Disciples were called for the first time in Antioch as Christians. Matthew 13, 52, the kingdom of Lord God, I will tell you what it is. Joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias, that's the Greek. You will not find that in the KJV. And every believer should join as disciple and grow up as grammatias in order to gather up new things to be bought from the old and new. Because the slave should be like the master, that's enough, said the Lord. But you haven't even become to be like the master and you have someone as your role models to be matched. But every believer in the church age, if he's been born again in Christ, he has to walk like Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, walk 1 John 2, 6, because he has the sperm of Christ, 1 John 3, 9. 
Thus he has to conform to the image of Christ. Romans 8, 26 through 32, wherewith he has been predestined in the Lord. In order to do so, he has given the bona fide gifted men called to be the pastor teachers who would train you up in becoming complete stature of the thinking of Christ. Ephesians 4, 8 through 16. And yet many people don't have the role model to realize in the church age it has to be Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our role model, the power wherewith he walked in his humanity to prove John 4.34, the same power has been given for us, wherewith he begged before God the Father in John 14.16, so that when he would come, he will lead us into all truth. And the truth is nothing but the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord God. Therefore, in order to completely follow my Lord with the standards of Tommy Eam, known to be as in accordance with fact and truth, you and I as a believer in the Lord has to cleanse the thoughts first what you have already been putting in your mind. The thoughts what your parents talk about, the thoughts what these people will talk about, believing them to be true, you lose it. Therefore, the four divine institutions given for this mankind, the role of this marriage, the role of godly parents, Malachi 2, 14 through 16, right from your Brafos stage when he quotes in Second Timothy 3, which could make you to become wise unto salvation. He's talking that while you have been there as an embryo or a fertus, or what you call that has to be as a zygote. The godly parents, why? Godly parents discuss about the word of God. And the godly parents like Zechariah and Elizabeth, they go to the pastor teacher to learn the mind of Christ because they have the fear of Lord God. And the reason why Lord God the Father has appointed the shepherds, we read that in Malachi 2, to teach them the life and the covenant of peace. To teach them the true life, Zoe. The life called as Kea. In the high and unique calling of this church age. That's what their work is. Their work is to teach. Their work is to expound. And people should come to learn the knowledge of God from the lips of the pastor teacher. Because you form as a divine institution and you form to get your godly children. And when you have your godly children, in return, they have to be fed with the mind of Christ. If your kids haven't been fed with the mind of Christ, by the age of nine, they need to be trained up very well, beginning from the age of two or one. If they don't match up to the standards of the mind of Christ, if they don't look upon what is the Bible, then they will believe the lies in the world to be the Bible and they think what they have achieved and performed. Because once by hook or crook they get success by believing such things and they think that's the reality of their life. Because the plan of Satan is first see that they don't believe in Christ. If ever they believe in Christ, the second strategy is see that they don't get in the word of God. If ever they get in the word of God, give him that which is absolutely sheer rot of oratories. Fill to the brim with the thoughts of these worldly lusts. What you fill that will come. If you fill them in the standards of lies, they will believe that lies to be the way of life. Because the process, what has been given for us is as you think, so you are. If you think the truth, you know how you have to be, you have to be like the Berrian crowd, which we have in Thessalonica. They used to go and cross-check the scriptures, whether they were so or not. But today we are not able to find such men. Whether the thoughts being fed to these people, whether they match the, time, the times of Christ or not, even they are not worried to look. They just go on to think they have done great works to Christ, and that's enough. And when they have done these great works to Christ, they are able to get rewards in the heaven. But forget it, dear brethren, you will never get any reward in the heaven. In fact, indeed, we doubt even your salvation, because 
A truly born-again believer in Christ is readily willing to take up his cross and follow my Christ. That's it. And he doesn't have any other thing to be replaced. He has to be always there available to carry his cross. Because Christ of Lord of God said, If you don't carry your cross, then you have no part with me. And people are still simply believing that Christianity to be as one among the religion. And as the word says in First Peter 4, if the judgment begins in the home, then how much more it will be for unbelievers to be saved because these believers would be rarely saved or very difficult to be saved. Because with Christ our Lord of our God in the church age, he besides giving to us this pleur of Paltima of complete privileges, there is no way we can play with the Lord God, as mockery as many men think. And these Thessalonians, when they would search the scriptures, they first were listening with the great readiness of mind. That's what it is, pro plus tumio. The word pro tumas, which is called to be, is as simple as to say, with great eagerness, with great standards to be as forwardness in waiting, in, ac in exhilarating acceptation, what it would be, how it would be. And they were waiting to look in a great zeal and desire. That's what the word Thumas is nothing but related to emotion. And when they have received it, now they are searching the scriptures and how daily. <laughs> they are not searching it weekly once when you attend the church. But they are searching the scriptures every day in Acts 17.11. In order to receive the scriptures first, they had that great readiness of mind. The same thing today, what we tell in order to be proved that you are also like Caleb, a man who walked with Lord God with all of his heart and did the good and great pleasure of Lord God the Father. Are you ready to take in the word of Lord God with all readiness of your heart? Don't try to wag your tail, though the man doesn't have a tail. Why I tell this? Because having only hands and legs, you have done much damage. And even don't now try to wag your tail. As I said in Romans 11, he would cut you off. He did not spare his original branches. How much more you would be for him? First come to learn with complete readiness of your mind. Because Lord God the Father, the way how David warns his son Solomon in First Chronicles 28. Be careful with the Lord God whom you are dealing with. He knows you when the imaginations and intentions behind your thoughts, the motives. He knows it very carefully. So therefore, don't try to play with him. And today the people are becoming the elders of the church without even understanding what is lacking, what has to be erected and what has to be mandated according to the prescription of the word of Lord God. They just think they can become elders for the purpose of proving the power and dignity of the lust. But God the Father who searches your hearts and brains, he knows very well. On that he's going to judge you. Revolution 2.13 followed by Revolution 22.13 as well. And he has in his hands according to the works, what have you done, he's going to pay you back. If your intentions are not clear, if your intentions are not clear to serve the Lord God with a great way of Caleb defended the crowd and they said, we can fight them. Come, let's go and do it. Even God the Father looks about your intention with what fear you're coming to the Lord God. He knows it, how he would smell us because he knows very well how he has made us. And he knows even the end from the beginning, he would tell and teach to you what you would be if you would ask. And do you not think, doesn't he smell you? 
until and unless you first take in the word as Deuteronomy 33.10 as a pastor, teacher and train them up so that to put incense, the smell that could, which could be offering to the Lord, the smoke of that smell, that meant to say what? He knows very well when this word transforms you, when this word operates in your heart and the tremble and the fear in your heart not to sin against the Lord, there is none who could survive by sinning against the Lord. Prior to that, you have been given to be alert, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to wax, not to lie, not to resist the indwelling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which abideth in you. Several times you grieve, you squelch. Therefore, the first thing he searches is he searches our reins and hearts. And he knows what are our motivations. He knows what are our thoughts. He knows very well what is the intention behind that, that we run as an elder, we run the church, or we become a pastor. And the greater you love to destroy the flock of the Lord God, the greater you are liable to pay the penalty. Therefore, he claims in James 3, 1, not many men to become the shepherds. You have a double or triple times, three times great judgment upon you. And that's what it happens, dear brethren. So looking upon your intentions, looking upon your activities very clearly, he can find out the word has worked in you or you are still the same hard-hearted, stiff-necked, rebellion man as the Israelites were. There is no need to give any testimony on our part. He knows very well what we would be. He would be always receiving a testimony like the way John the Baptist was in John 3. He shined like the light luminaries holding for the word of Lord God. So he wants everyone to be like the light luminaries holding for the word of Lord God. And the people rejoiced in his ministry. Rejoiced because they got the divine revolution. But in the present Christendom, you will find the men always being to be as the backbiters or the way how they pull you down, pull you back, but they will never be the people to assist you in truth. It's a very, very sad thing for us to note. Therefore, if the pastor teacher doesn't prepare in your life or in your standards that you need to repent and get back to the will of God by looking what is there happening in your inner heart, in your inner man, then you cannot be given as a sacrifice upon the burnt altar. First, the smoke should come. The smoke itself signifies that are you really worth enough to take in the word or not. If this smoke which has been in you it shows that whether you are interested to take it or not. And if you are not interested, dear brethren, God the Father knows very well that you are playing mockery with Him. And those who play mockery with the Lord, they have paid in full. They have proved in full. The examples are for us in the past dispensation. The examples earlier than the past dispensation, as he says in Jude, as well as in Second Peter, he did not spare his angels. The same thing what we read in Hebrews chapter 2. He did not spare the angels, he did not spare them. Then how much more shall we escape such great sal su such wrath of Lord God if we ignore such great salvation given in our hands. The angels were confined. The men of the past were not spared, including Moses, to tell without obeying the commandments of God, first in his ministry to enter Zephora, the way how she calls him, the blood of her husband, you are a man to me, and the exit of his ministry, not keeping his word not speaking to the rock, he hit twice. And he was said, you did not honor my word before this people. Then how much more we need to be alert. A man who is faithful steward in all of the house, he claimed to Moses. 
then how much more at every instance of our life we are rebelling against the Lord God. How much more we are rebelling every breath. And in order to not to be in the areas of desert or pits or drought or in the shadow of death every day, we need to take in the mind of Christ. That mind of Christ cleanses our thoughts right from the embryo, zygote stage, till I could die on this earth, if you have been fed in by the word of Lord God, not to believe the hearsay of this earth. The rationalism or empiricism, what the people, they try to prove with their experimental things. The people with the men, it is impossible, said the Lord, but with the word of Lord God, everything is possible. The power of man, it cannot go against the nature. But God the Father could make even a path for you to walk by dividing asunder the Red Sea. He could make from the heaven to pour out hailstones and great stones. He could put forth for us the nature to support us when the sun and moon were hesitated. They were not hastily going, but they were still reluctant one long day so that the battle could be finished, the battle to kill off Bethoron, Azekah, Medeca, and the overall called as Amorite, the soothsayers. The Bethoron house of Holonus, Azekah they have dug in and kept as a fence so that no one should enter. Medeca, a place of shepherds. They have come now in the present Christendom as Amorites, soothsayers. They are not exiting the passages. And yet God the Father teaches us a lesson that even nature supports. Sun and moon, the nature over there refers back to a vigor and valor. The strength of this vigor and valor, what we have, it will be abiding in the word of Lord God and day by day it increaseth. That's what we read that in, Psalm, in Proverbs 24, a man of strength increaseth. You know the word we find there in Proverbs 24. Maybe it's in verse number 6. And in contrast to that in verse number 10, he talks about the word, what it has to be. In the day of adversity, why you are having no strength. But over here in Proverbs 24, 3, if we would look, it says that it is in verse number 5. A wise man, Kokma, again, Gebura strength, is strong. The word strong is the O's strength. And Ish, the word man of knowledge, that is called to be the earth file, increases. What does he do? Amats. That is, he becomes more courageous, more strong. Increaseth his coach power. The power to become like the standards of the strength of God. The strength of angels and the power of God. He increaseth. That is, the word increaseth is nothing but Amart, that is to become courageous, to become brave, to become solid, to become hard. And the nature supports you because you are increasing it. The nature is not against you, but that we meant to say what? Till we could finish the work of Lord God, as the way how Caleb said. Those who walk wholeheartedly with the Lord of our God. These are the people, as the Bible would say, though he was 85, he had in him the vigor of 40. Those who walk with Lord God as Moses, though he was 120 years, his eyesight was not dimmed. And these were the people who truly and readily walked with the Lord God so that their natural vigor and valor would not decrease, but rather in return, Man of wisdom they will be and they would increase, that they would become more courageous and brave. By having knowledge, they would increase like the strength of angels because of the power of God operating in them. Therefore we find Isaiah 40, 31 teaching to us, Youth may fail, ang may perish, but they that wait upon the Lord God will renew their strength like eagles. 
because the nature, the word meant to say vigor and valor of you, what you have through the word of blood, God, also hesitates to vanish off so easily. That's what we read that in Joshua 10 verses 12. Even the sun and moon hasted. They were not making their progress to be soon. They wanted to kill off this house of hollowness. They wanted to destroy the things pertaining to this dagoba, fence dover, ditches. They wanted to make the place of shepherds to be vanished off and fulfill it back once again with the standards of great holy hill like the field of deers. Deer meant to say over there again are ill, which is nothing but pillar, chief man, leader, and the great exercised one in the word of God. Therefore, he uses two things, sun to direct the daylight, moon to direct the night light. So that sun and moon, sun will stand on the holy hill. You have to be like the light luminary shining in the mind of Christ. And night, the moon, which has to be on the field of deer. Everyone should be like a pillar. Everyone should be like a leader. Everyone should be like a chief exercising authority of Christ. And that sun and moon did not move. The same thing in your energy of your flesh, your valor and vigor will not waste away. Provided you completely walk with Lord God in all of your heart. The same thing we read in Psalms 119, isn't it? He says that the Hebrew word pa'el, P-A-A-L, which teaches to us in return the systematical and habitual process wherewith you walk in in the mind of Christ every day. So he says that in verse number 2, Yasher, again upright, are they that keep his testimonies. The word keep is not said to protect, to guard, and to maintain by obeying it. The word testimonies is nothing but yada. The origin of the word comes from ed, and it goes to be the origin of ud because it is a repeated witness of testimony to my Christ. So he says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Therefore the assembly is nothing but to keep the testimonies of my Christ. The churches are called to be the witness of truth. As an example about John the Baptist, he was born to witness the truth. He was a witness for light. Every believer being born as Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, was born and shows forth for us the completed can of scripture of revolution to prove. As Pontius Pilate claims, what you are, are you a king? He said, yes, I am a king. I have been born to witness the truth. So is the life pattern of every believer in the church age to witness the truth. And you assemble in the congregation to learn to be a repeated witness of this truth not to be a repeated witness for satanic activities in your churches. You know, much of the time, having only hands and legs, the man is a repeated witness for the works of Satan. He is not a repeated witness by holding forth in his hand the word of light and shining as light luminaries. He isn't. Out of hundred times, if we would take the proximity 99.99 .99 times is witnessing the works of Satan. Even 0.0001% is, which is negligible, he don't, we cannot even find him that he is witnessing now to be born for truth. Just go back and access your life, you will realize that. In accord with fact and truth, what the word of Lord God demands, in accord with the word of Christ, what the word of Lord God demands, how much you are been really witnessing, how much you are really capable of working out the will of God. In each and every day you have 24 hours. In that 23 hours you will witness for lies. And every time what you put in your mind, that only you meditate, that only you think of, that only you cause your body to worry. But you don't take in the word of Lord God and believe. The great words for us in Psalm 73, Though my heart faileth, yet I will praise the Lord. He is the strength and the power of me. 
They don't believe that they want to run for a doctor. The things when the psalmist are writing is writing for us to look what was the true life given to them and what they failed. And when they have failed, they're coming back with rebound and asking God the Father to use at least the rest of his days to be given to him the wisdom and teach him how to use those days for the wisdom and the glory of God. The same thing of Revelation 3, recommendation given to you in verse 1. Haven't found your works perfect to be before the presence of God the Father? At least now, the things which are about to die, save it. That's the principle in the book of Psalms, what you find. When he says 70 or 80 years to the maximum, he's referring back when his wrath is abiding upon him. But three times the life of my Christ for every believer given so that they could walk in him before him in truth and in absolute standards of his grace. Not grieving, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not squelching, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, look upon your life, how marvelous it would be. But either by thought, word, or deed, we do sin, we do grieve, we do squelch. Even that God the Father wants to be put to death. Therefore, right from the scratch, right from the things that have been there, you have to be available to become disciple to the Lord God. Then you have to be hating the things which my Christ hates. And in order to look that in very simple word, Christ our Lord our God was born in the spirit. And we are born in the flesh. By believing in Christ we are called to be born again in the spirit. So that we could also walk like Christ as he walked. Therefore, dear brethren, how many days more? Coming back over here, a man of wisdom increases strength. We look the testimonies of Lord God that they have been keeping, they are blessed. And he says, Seek him, the rash, to inquire, to require, to, re to demand, and to practice, so that your worship should be according to the truth. He says, seek him with your whole heart. The word lab, inner man. And therefore, when you walk with your whole heart, he says, they also do again the word pael. The word pael is nothing but for us systematically and habitually what you practice. He says that it becomes a lifetime of activity for you not to systematically and habitually sin or to go for injustice or violent deeds of injustice or unrighteousness standards or to act wrongfully. And he says they walk in his ways. The same thing what Christ our Lord of our God teaches. Your will is what I mind. Not my will, Father, but only thy will be done. And that's when every believer comes to that. He would make use to become like Caleb. He would make use the natural vigor of Lord God, even to be supported by the nature. You know, some people would say, the climatic conditions do not match. You're not having good health because of this, because of that. But when you are pleasing your ways to God the Father, your ways when they have been pleased to God the Father, even your enemies will be with you in front. And when enemies have been there with you in friendship or in standards of truth, the nature also will be with you in accord to help you to become brave, courageous and hard. But the problem is our ways have haven't been yet pleased to the Lord. That's the problem. And we are not able to walk like the way how Caleb walked. We are not able to perform the will of God the Father. The reason is we are not minding the things of Christ. We are not making to endure, to inquire. The things of Christ Jesus our Lord. You are still blinded in the standards of this earth. You are still blinded to look the deeds of this flesh. 
you have not endured to inquire what is the truth. You have not endured to consider what is your life after death. Therefore, he says for us in Psalms, in the same Proverbs, verse chapter 24, verse 10, you know, he says for us very clearly to understand that if you faint in the day of adversity, the word faint is nothing but to be relaxed, disheartened, to be slackened, to become idle. In the day of adversity is nothing but when you get your distress or having to look your tribu your tribulation kind of troubles. And over here we look that which is narrow. He says the reason because thy strength coach and the strength coach which should be the strength of angels in the power of God, what does it become? It becomes like to be for you as a chameleon. The reason why it is like a chameleon, because you have made it to be narrow. And why it is narrow? No word of God in you to claim to the conditions, to look back the situations, to understand in the divine viewpoint. Anything or everything on this earth is a repeated history of the events that have been occurred several times, but only the places have changed, the designs have changed, but the concept is the same. Man's rebellion, Lord God comes up with grace. And any time you look upon the standards of this world, how he has rebelled, he has rebelled by rejecting the truth, by rejecting to take in or to be fed in upon the word of God. And now the trends have, might have changed, now the places might have changed, but man's old sin nature, which is inculcated at the moment of his physical birth, Birth to him is the same, irrespective of his changing characters of names and places, yet the solution is only one thing, to learn the mind of Christ. Man constantly rebels, Lord God comes up with grace. And how does he rebel? He rebels by not to gather in the mind of Christ. No strength, he says. Since your strength is small, you are a useless, worthless fellow. That's what the word is. Small strength is not a strength to fight great battles to the Lord. Caleb being recorded, a man walks six times when we look. The man who walked with the Lord card with all of his heart. Six times. He went into the time of Joshua 14 as well. Beginning with numbers after that report of survey. Because his strength was great. Believed Lord God and his word. He believed Deuteronomy 18.13 to walk before Lord God, Tami Im. He believed that which has to be in accord with fact and truth to Lord God. And he walked, he did not spare, he did not hesitate, he did not have anything more than to teach the word of God. And the same thing he passed down the information to his children. As Joshua claims, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Because Joshua and Caleb, both of them they are. And why these things have been recorded for us? The reasons are very simple, dear brethren. Even we also should learn from them. But coming to the church age, if you have your strength still small, it is a shame. Because we are not compared now to walk like Peter or Paul or John. We are compared now to walk like Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you are not gaining your strength, you are insulting my Christ. Though you already do that in your flesh, because you have known Christ in this flesh. After knowing Christ, you haven't been known or unknown to this flesh. You are still abiding in your sin. You are still lusting over your lustful patterns. Therefore, the ministry of reconciliation has not been given to you, though you may think. But every believer has been called to be an ambassador to the Lord. Every believer has been made to be as a kinekatesis to Christ. The ministry of reconciliation has been given to us so that we shall no longer reside in the works of darkness or equally yoked with it, but rather be separated and be in the standards of the truth forever. And much of the people are not able to realize this. 
They are just considering their life to be that which is absolutely vain and vague and that they think it is great. In much of the present Christendom, you would hardly find believers up to 5 to 10 percent in the entire world who walk by the word of God, who live by the word of God. In fact, indeed, who know the word of Lord God categorically, isagogically, exegetically, and dispensationally. You, would very, you find very few, very few. And yet God the Father for this few pivot, he is still long-suffering and patient. If not, he would have winded up this church age long back because there is no time period for the church age as he has given the time period for the Israelites, 70 weeks bestowed upon your people. You know not the hour when the rapture would be. But much of the time we look the church deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating to the cause. If they would repent and get back, God the Father would give them grace, but they're not interested to look back. And yet God the Father sends his men to preach you the warning to teach you to wake up to the reality, to do your work of ministry of reconciliation completely, to perform the things which the word of Lord God demands. But you're not able to realize it. Neither you're able to accept it. The reasons being very, very simple because you don't love my Lord. You love the world, you hate my Christ. In order to do the things which are pleasing to God the Father, you need to hate the world and love the word of God. He put in action. But you're not loving my Christ. You love the world. What a sad thing it is for us to know. It begins with the top. It begins right down under the root. The top, the people who are pastor teachers should put back once again the truth in the pulpit with exegesis. Then he's strengthening the tree from the roots. They make them to be rooted and grounded in Christ, but they are now not rooted and grounded in Christ, but they are stuck in the mud. And since they are stuck in the mud, the corruption begins right from the roots. And when the destroy begins right from the roots, there could be no fruit upward. The roots are nothing but for you, the church. The teachings are nothing but as a pastor teacher who should strengthen the roots. And when there are no roots which are properly strengthened, then no fruits, either in the branches, though you are called to be, from the true wine for him the branches. Israel was his missionary work as a branch in that wine fig, in the wine tree, what we read in Isaiah 5. The same wine work of missionary is given to us, but only when you will realize 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 16 first. Then you will be a new creation, kinekatesis. Then from verse 18 through 21, you will understand the ministry of reconciliation as an ambassador to God. Then when you come to eyes in the same work of chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, you will not be equally yoked with the darkness, unbelieving standards of unrighteousness. But rather you would be waiting upon to be called as the dear children of God the Father, Second Corinthians 7, 1. And what a great privilege it is for us, he said, long back in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit unction given to you. In Isaiah 61, 8, long back before we could have this, before we could understand this, life on this earth in the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God. Long back, he said, Long back he said for us in Isaiah 61, 8, that he loves judgment and he hates robbery. 
and you are robbing not to become a disciple from the Lord God everything. By not becoming a disciple, we have robbed out everything from the Lord. And he says, don't worry, I will pay them their wages. It is not that he directs the work in truth. But the Hebrew says he pays us back the wages of our life according to the standards of his truth. And then he is going to make with us an everlasting covenant to be with him forever. What a great privilege it is for us. If you want your wages to be in the heaven, that which has to be as you desire now, that is, you think you have really earned a lot in the heaven to make your entrance to be double or to have your entrance to be great, then live the life of godliness. Second Peter chapter one, chapter one, verses three through thirteen. Live a life of godliness to the Lord. Don't be blind or barren. But rather look the futurity of the mystery doctrine of the church age. Have you done the things in the power of the Holy Spirit of God? Have you confirmed to teach in the church the manifold wisdom of God? Have you put upon the entire panoply of my Christ to fight against the fiery darts of Satan by holding forth the blessed of righteousness to the Lord? Or have you at least looked upon to look the standards of resurrection of Christ in you? Philippians 3. Have you thought upon that we have to be like the like-minded as Christ Jesus our Lord our God in looking upon the things of the Lord's work rather than looking upon our own life in its own standards of this flesh? Or are you performing the great work of the Lord in this mystery epistle, what he teaches in Colossians 1, 24 through 26, particularly to pay through his flesh the afflictions of Christ? He's not talking about the vicarious sufferings, but he's talking about the mental agony of my Lord, which every believer has to reach the perfection of complete mature thinking in Christ Jesus. He was born in the Spirit. We are born again in the Spirit. Though he was born in the Spirit, he said there is no one good because he's taking the form of the dust. None good except God. Then how much more even the best could be not workable to the Lord God when he writes through the book of Job. When we are been there in the flesh, and how much more careful we need to walk perfect, like the way how Caleb walked, like the way how we showed the proof for us, how much more we have to be alert, rather than making up our lives to love the deeds of the flesh and the things in it, why can't we hate the deeds of the flesh? If you hate the deeds of the flesh, you will take up your cross. And he will become the disciple of the Lord my God. Because he will be rewarded according to the works, the occupation and the business. The occupation and the business, if it is not being there to do the will of God the Father, then you are going to lose it. You will be paid back according to the occupation and the works, the business wherewith you have made, which follow you. And the things which follow you, that you have to become a disciple of the Word of God. Therefore, to say the tech non-believer in John 1 to to them, he gave the exousia authority to become the sons of God. The exousia authority to the will of God. He teaches to us very clearly and very specifically, dear brethren. We have to be, as the word rabbis would call their children, the disciples or the pupils. The learners as techno believers. And what a sad thing it is for us to note. You don't even become a disciple, you would expect great things from God without attempting the great things of God. And you think your material prosperity, do you know who prospers it? 
because of the inculcation of righteousness of God to you, it is he who gives you this living grace of time. In this living grace, he provides you everything because he knows how to get back to lead you and providence shall prevent your suffering. The things which he wants you to be the glory of God to the highest. He provides. There is nothing you have acquired. There is nothing you have designed. There is nothing you have got it. Whatever you design, whatever you think you got it, it is purely your all sin nature. But what graciously Lord God the Father, because he said every, good, every perfect and good gift cometh from the Father of lights. And whatsoever Lord God the Father gives you to be the good gift, you regret it not, because he knows how vast and beautiful is that gift in your life. Whatever it is, including the slippers you wear, and every minute details of your life, he knows that what is best and good. And when you don't work, the first is well. Yet, he has made you on this earth. He provides you that grace so that the sooner the better you would come back to the will of God. But you still reject the great will of God. Dear brethren, how many days more you want to be not to be like-minded the things of Christ. There are men, he says in, Pro, in, Psalms, in Philippians 2.21, they don't mind the things of God, but they mind the things of their own flesh. That's why your strength is narrow in the day of adversity. And because of that narrow strength, you're not able to go back and do the evangelism work in Christ. Because of that narrow strength, you are not able to go and make disciples. And yet you say to Lord God, I do not know these things, Lord. That's what we read that in Proverbs 24, 12. But God the Father keeps an account of your every systematic and habitual thoughts which you have put in practice. He knows very well what it is. He knows very well. Don't try to play with Lord God. Though they that are near to death pull them out, he said in Jude. They that are vanishing out pull them back because time is short for us. It is not a time for us now to relax. It's a high time of calling. We have to awake, not to sleep. We have to do the works of the day. And the three days of journey, what he said, it is for us on this earth as well. The three days, the three times life of my Christ given for us in performing his glorious will. The sooner the better you wake up to completely walk before Lord God the Father with your wholeheartedness. And not to practice any iniquity, not to practice any other things, but only perform the great will of the Lord. Dear brethren, think over these issues. God the Father in heaven, he pays us back according to his truth, our wages. In order to be with him in the eternal covenant of Lord God the Father through Christ Jesus, now is the time for us to believe upon him and to walk in his ways. When once you enter there in the heaven, there will be classification of believers. Good and faithful stewards, being good and faithful in the work committed unto them. And some of them would be like the way having to be peons rather than to be great ministers. And God the Father has given for every believer right now on this earth under the spiritual IQ, equal privilege and equal opportunity to be his faithful witness forever. And the greater we let go these things, the greater we don't learn about these things, it purely shows that you are not at all walking worthy in his calling. You are as good as the rebellion people like the Israelites. You are as good as the fallen angels which did not took the salvation of the Lord. 
that you have only hands and legs, they had wings. The same fate shall not be upon you to rebel against the word of Lord God, come back to be under a new creation. Knowing Christ in this flesh, no longer known this flesh, but rather you know only Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, to live in that. So that you are called not to be the reconciliation ministry of my Christ. Walk perfect, said the Lord in Deuteronomy 18.13. Caleb and Joshua walked before the Lord. How many days more we shall walk against the Lord? You cannot do anything. You can do only all things through Christ who strengthens us. Walking in your flesh will break you up. Walking in Christ through the Spirit will build you up. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest mind is to care so thon lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the Diamatrima witnesses where with you have been called. The number one Diamatrima witnesses in well infinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Diamatrima witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a marvelous great it is, O Lord, to understand the truth. With thee we build, O Lord, in the flesh we destroy. Not to take any thoughts in our mind apart from thy word. Help us, Father, to constantly have the complete heart like the way how Caleb depended upon thy word and did your work. As Joshua took upon your assurance and went to say, the sun and moon to stand still in Gibeon and Alocha for the purpose of feeding the flock and to rescue them from the standards of this house of hollowness, from the standards of these fences which they have put and the standards of this place of shepherds which haven't done the will of God. What a sad thing it is, O Lord, to look and to pursue as you have given for us under your daily Kaza strength to inspect how this present Christendom has been led to apostasy to the core. Help us, Father, to build them back once again according to their will in their word, so that every word of us and every deed of us, every breath of us, every thought of us, every facet of the cell in us could be only worthy enough to praise you and to do your work to the praise of your glory and your grace for which you have called us in a pretty past. And we don't require anything else on this earth, O Lord, than to be led constantly in thy will, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and in the complete word, as you seek those worshippers who worship you in spirit and in truth, in the standards who have completely matured and understood your Alethenia's work. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.